So you want to start a plant-based diet, but you're not quite sure how to start? Well, watch and I will teach you exactly what you need to do and how to avoid the most common mistakes. So you want to start a whole food plant-based diet. Congratulations. You are making one of the most significant decisions um, for your long-term health that you could possibly do, but you don't know where to start. Well, first of all, I would like to show you there are some great resources on the healthyhumanrevolution.com website just to help you get started. We'll get to more of that later, but right now, how do you actually start? Where do you even begin? Do you go all in the first day or do you kind of ease into it? Well, I think there's two types of personalities um, that start a whole food plant-based diet. There are those that like, let's get it done, let's just jump right in and they have no problem. But then there's others who do that thinking that they won't have issue and then they fall back to their old habits and then they basically walk away from the diet altogether. And then there's others who do very well by slowly moving into the plant-based diet. When I mean slowly, over the course of two to three weeks, having being completely whole food plant-based. First of all, let's discuss what a whole food plant-based diet is. It is one with unrefined you know, uh, plant foods. So this is gonna be fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and a small amount of nuts and seeds. It avoids processed vegan foods, processed oils, or any oils that they matter. You're removing any added sugars, um, anything in that kind of category, and then you're also removing animal products. So cheese, dairy products, anything that had a face or came from a face, includes fish, chicken, poultry, uh, beef, pork, anything, like I said, that was once living or a byproduct of a living creature. <laughs> so that would be a whole food plant-based diet. So how do you start? First of all, you have to look at, are you by yourself? It's a much easier to start if you're by yourself, but if you have a family, you have to also take into the con their consideration in what they want to do as well. Now it doesn't, shouldn't hinder you from starting, but you do have to maybe approach it in a more gradual and, um, thoughtful way. Um, first of all, what foods are you already consuming that are whole food plant-based? Do you already eat oatmeal every morning, and but you use regular milk? Instead, maybe put in you know oat milk or soy milk or almond milk and replace that. So there you set, your mornings are ready to go. Maybe you eat um, eggs every morning. You're like, well, how am I gonna get rid of my eggs? Well, maybe you do like a tofu scramble. So the first thing I would be is look at what you're already doing that's already plant-based, continue that, and then look at things that are easy to replace. So for example, let's say that you have um, chicken soup that you like with vegetables on it. So instead, just make a more hearty vegetable soup with beans or in a whole grain. So those are the things that you kind of start thinking about substitution-wise. Kid, you like pizza, okay? Well, let's make a pizza that's plant-based. So you get a whole wheat pizza crust, you do the pizza sauce, you put tons and tons of vegetables on it. It is delicious and very healthy for you. So those are some things that you can do. Instead of you know spaghetti, marinara, and meatballs, maybe you do spaghetti, marinara, and tons of vegetables. That's the kind of line of thinking that will help you get started on the right footing. Now, on occasion, if you have other family members who refuse to do this with you, that is a discussion that you'll need to have. And I should do a video actually on social, you know, social um, difficulties that people have with like relationships and colleagues and traveling. We'll get to that in a future um, episode, but right now just focus in on your health because you're the one that has to live with you. It's not your spouse, it's not your kids, it's not your neighbors, your coworkers. Every decision that you make, everything you consume will have a long-term impact on your health. And that you, my friend, the one looking in the mirror is the one that has to deal with that. So don't give up. It may be difficult. Um, that's why it's also, you know, consider joining us on Facebook on the Healthy Human Nation. It's our free Facebook group to, to you know, correspond with others that are also believe in the same process you do, that you want to eat healthy to become healthy or stay healthy. So that's the first step. The second step 
would be to understand that this is actually a cheaper alternative to eating um, you know, all the processed foods, the meat and the dairy. So you actually save money when you move to a whole food plant-based diet because they're, I mean, look at dried beans and dry it in the dried grains like rice. That's some of the cheapest foods you can buy in large quantities at any grocery store, anywhere you go. So now there's time factors. There's tons of other things. We have other resources, like I mentioned on our website, but getting started, it's really important to think about what you already have. Think about things that, um, you can easily substitute and make healthier that you're already consuming. And if you choose to go all in overnight, you need to get rid of everything in the house that's not on a whole food plant-based diet unless you have to make some concessions to other family members. But I'm saying for the, in general, you'd want to not have these things to choose from, but other things in place. So if you put on your table, you know, fruits and vegetables and not a jar of candy or a jar of, you know, processed um, like bars and stuff, you're gonna grab the banana when you're hungry or the apple when you're hungry instead of a handful of M&Ms. So that's one thing. Number two is think about what you can actually know how to cook already so and how much time you have should you are you cool with um you know getting the rice uh, let's say a cauliflower the cauliflower head or do you would it help you to buy cauliflower that's already been chopped up that's excellent so think about those things and remember the less processed it is the cheaper it will be the other thing to do is also consider using frozen foods frozen foods are sometimes more nutritionally um, are more nutritious than your, your produce you see in the uh, produce section because now they've actually flash frozen that food when it's picked versus picking a food that's before it's ripe and travel thousands of miles to get to you. So those are options too. So let's say that you like corn, okay? Instead of buying the produce corn, maybe buy the frozen corn because then you can, you know, it's easier and quicker to use. Um, now let's say you choose to transition. The easiest way I found for a majority of people is a transition over breakfast for a week. That's the easiest meal. Then move into lunch for the second week. And then by dinner, uh, the third week, by, they're ready to rock and roll by changing out their dinner. Um, and many times people by the second week, they're like, if I can do lunch, I can do dinner. So as far as planning a well-balanced meal, you definitely want to make sure that you're trying to be as um, a wide variety as possible. So you want to include fruits daily, vegetables daily, some whole grains, and you know, that's going to be things like rice, quinoa, millet, um, bulgur wheat, um, oats, all those different things can take that place. And then legumes, um, beans and legumes are so good for you. Lentils, you know, anywhere from a cup to a cup and a half a day would be fantastic for most adults. Um, and then not, you know, just a handful of, um, seeds and nuts. So what would a day, um, in a, a whole food plant-based diet eaters look like? For example, breakfast, maybe be, let's say steel cut oats with some blueberries and banana and soy milk, maybe a little ground flax and some pumpkin seeds on top. Maybe lunch should always incorporate some type of vegetables. So maybe you like salads. You can do tons of different salads um, with a little bit of fat um, in the dressing, like maybe um, a nut-based dressing, but just a little bit. It helps you absorb certain nutrients, or you could sprinkle some nuts on there. You could use um, flavored balsamic vinegars also on the salad. Um, you would, could include beans in there. You can make it a bowl. You could do like... Um, different type of bowls that would include a grain, vegetables, and some legumes with a, a different type of dressing. Um, you could do stir fries. Um, for I, Like just yesterday, I made a huge batch of um, stir fried vegetables that needed to be used up from our uh, CSA, and which is a community supported agriculture where you're supporting local farms and they bring you food or you go and pick it up. And these were amazing vegetables, but I needed to use them up. So now I've stir fried them. They had we had all sorts, we had greens, we had um, peppers, and there were onions and mushrooms and a variety of different things. And then I made some long grain brown rice and um, I put some soy sauce on there and we're good to go. So dinners could be, again, your normal dinners, but let's say instead of a you know, meat laden burrito, you use beans and rice and vegetables. Um, I grew up in New Mexico, I love Mexican food. Mexican food's an easy way to switch over. So you could do, 
Um, enchiladas the same way, beans instead and vegetables with a, a similar type of um, enchilada sauce. You could, <laughs> the, the, literally the thought, the, the whole number of foods you can consume is, it's limitless. There are thousands of whole food or plant-based foods that you can consume. One of my tricks that I really like to do is I will type in either vegan or plant-based whatever. So let's say that I have like um, mushrooms, uh, zucchini, and some bell peppers that I need used up. Or maybe I have a hankering for something that's um, Italian or Indian. So what I would do is I always put either plant-based or vegan in front of it. And then I would put whatever it is, I'm either like saying a mushroom, zucchini, a pepper recipe, <laughs> or it's maybe um, Indian recipe, or um, Mexican recipe, or Chinese food recipe, whatever, desserts, whatever you're looking for. And then what I'll do is on Google, you'll get this ton of different options, and I look for the five five star options. Because honestly, I have yet to be disappointed because the majority of people who are gonna give it a five star have made it and it's been good enough for them, it's probably gonna be good enough for me. That is one way that I really have learned a ton in different recipes. Um, because you know, you'll find your staples. There are things that we eat regularly. That's our oatmeal. Um, we always have beans. We always have typically grain. We always have some type of salad or vegetable. We always do um, a lot of um, like a tofu scramble. That is a great way to do with the next morning. So those are things that are in our home, but you may have different palates, um, different age groups, different um, people who have different tolerances for spicy foods. So and in, don't forget to use your spices, use your flavors. So when you incorporate your plant foods, we want to you know, enjoy the flavorful food. And it's really important to think about your repertoire of spices. And that's where I think just getting started, just looking at different recipes and how they start using those, you'll soon find that you're adding those on your own. So that would be how I would start. And then just really look at the, the things that, like I said, that you already eat, how you can substitute for those or convert those to be healthier. So that's the great. Now, what are some of the mistakes that I'm seeing people make? <sighs> Common mistakes, they go start buying a bunch of processed vegan foods. Um, a lot of these are these um, you know, fake meats, um, these are not healthy. Um, they're also more expensive. Now, are these transitional foods or maybe you can use those to help your family eat more plant-based? That's, that's fine. But in the long term, you're not going to have the health benefits if you were doing 100% whole food plant-based. Um, the other thing is they're consuming a lot of oils still. Oils are not a health food. It's a processed food. It's pure fat. Um, now, are some oils better than other oils? Yes but it's still not a health food. It's like comparing you know, olive oil to, to lard. Is the olive oil better? Yes, but it's still not a health food. Um, now, there will be some people that argue at that point with me, but I've just seen it not benefit my patients in any shape or form. It worsens blood sugar readings. It, it's, it's not gonna aid in your weight loss. It's 120 calories per tablespoon. But again, this is not an oil bashing video. This is about the common mistakes I'm seeing people make. Um, the other thing is maybe they're not consuming enough calories. So sometimes people will feel fatigued. When I first was learning to teach people how to go on a whole food plant-based diet, I didn't really qualify that it's really important that you conclude your starchy vegetables, your beans, your whole grains, because these are, the, these are gonna be the ones that are gonna be the more dense foods, they're more fulfilling, more have calories that will sustain you. And the fruits and the vegetables are added benefits of the nutritional nutrient the nutrients that they bring to your food. But when I tell people, oh, go on a plant-based diet, they automatically can assume that means fruits and vegetables only. And they were just eating salads or a lot of fruit and they were hungry. They were losing rapidly losing weight, but they were fatigued um, and just, it wasn't working out. So that seems to be one of the more common mistakes as well. And finally, you know, it's honestly just sticking to your why. Why did you switch to a plant-based diet to begin with? Because there will be points that this is hard. And I promise though, if you stick with it long enough, and it, it's definitely less than a year, but I would say you'd need at least probably three to six months of being consistent, you're gonna find that you forget how you even ate like 
you did before. You feel so good, you probably need less medications or no medications at that point. You have energy, you're sleeping well, less pains, more recovery if you're an athlete. There's so many added health benefits that you're like, how did I ever not eat a whole food plant-based diet? And the one thing that I find that's really interesting is people go, well, is this what it actually feels to be normal? I'm like, yes. When you don't have the burden of toxins in your body, these animal products, these processed foods, and you eat a whole food plant-based diet, your body begins to thrive. And that is what is normal. It is not normal for us to walk around with a bag full of prescriptions needed to correct issues that we literally are caused by what we're consuming every day. So I hope you found that helpful. We have some really cool um, things for you. For If you'll hit the subscribe button and the like, and in the first hour after each video that goes up, we actually will be giving away our seven day Healthy Human Revolution transformation course. This goes over everything that you could possibly need to know to start on a whole food plant-based diet. We talk about social interactions, we talk about traveling, we talk about shopping, we talk about going out to eat, we talk about with your kids, we talk about exactly what foods to consume. Literally, this is, if all you had was that information, it will be enough for you. I took a year for me to learn from my patients and my own experience to develop everything that's in the seven day course that you can get for free by hitting the subscribe and the like button and checking out our video, or excuse our course over at thehealthhumanrevolution.com. And if you have comments or questions, please let, you know, put a link below, or I'm sorry, put a comment below or a question below, and I'll be picking one of those every week to answer. And I hope you found this helpful and you guys have a great day and thanks for watching.